Shabbat Shalom, welcome, giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For everything, is he's worthy to be praised for everything, hallelujah, to his holy name. I've uh, been doing a series on uh, solutions to make the most high have pity on us. I want to continue this. And I realized that uh, the attention span of the Asherah is that small but I challenge you to really look at this and hear the word of the Most High concerning solutions that we did as the Israelites in the past that will work today because it's the last time we really have to sincerely cry to the Most High for our deliverance. But see maybe we haven't been afflicted enough yet. Let's read about it. Let's go into the scriptures and look at solutions of what we did, and then you make the decision on your own. Because if you're prideful, you're not going to be able to do this. And don't wait till affliction come and then cry to him. It's too late then. Proverbs 124 down tell you, hey, he's going to mock and laugh at you. With the angels around him. Following suit. Why is this thunder so loud? You know, I'm going through all these changes. Help me, boss. Help me, most high. Help me. You're going to be laughing and mocking you. Colossians 3.17. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Bahashama, Mashiach, Kevashai. Give me thanks to the most high and the father. Bahashama, Mashiach, Kevashai. So we're going to start. Like I said, everything that we do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. And understand this, when he's saying it. There is no New Testament. There's only the law and the prophets that they had to go by. So a lot of that's like going over people's head because they looking at they have a they they like Christian Israelites. They believe in Mashiach of Shai pretty much came back in the flesh for the first time existing. You see? And that's not true. You say come in a volume of a book, you say search the scriptures. What scriptures you gonna search? If you go back to the time he's saying search the scriptures, what scriptures you gonna search? It's not going to be revelation. It wasn't, he didn't even exist. Paul's writing didn't exist. I got to keep reminding you that they only had the law and the prophets. So all you that don't, don't believe in the Mashiach Yavashai, don't believe in the New Testament, remember they only had the law and the prophets. the same thing you believe in. You Old Testament cats, you know. That's all they had was the law and the prophets. When you walked in the flesh, that's all they had. That's all he had to go by. So that's why you, you, you haven't studied enough, I guess, to be able to see that. To make it make sense. But it's got to make sense. Because he's the word of the most high. The most high have a voice. And he's the word of the most high. He didn't just become the word of the most high. So I say in the beginning was the word. The word was with the most high. The word was the most high. The word was the Mashiach was shy. You see. He was there in the beginning. So he the word of the most high. You have a voice. You have from a voice come words. But if you can't see him as a spirit. As the spirit of the most high. As the angel of the most high. Then you're you missing it. Period. So let's go to Deuteronomy. Since we, you know, like I said, this ain't for the pride for people. It's only for the humble and those that have a broken and contrite spirit before the Most High. And he knows who they are. That's why I see half the people stop listening once they heard the first, first uh, lesson. Guess they figured they had enough. But it's not enough because we have to keep on reviewing things. See, we come from a programming that was within our ancestors coming here in America, the religious, the religious instruction to the Negroes in the United States of America. We all come from that programming. So it's about turning to them and say this, it's review, 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 and saying the same thing over and over and over again. Most I speak once, yea, twice, white man don't receive it. Man receive it not, he says. So you got to review this. You got to hear it. You can't just, it ain't just coming into you. So you can continue to go wherever I'm going to go, go in this lesson. And you can't. That's why we got to review it. We got to go over it. So you have it to be able to go over it and look at these scriptures and look at, wow, man, there it is again. There it is again. We look at solutions. If you, what's the point of being an Israelite? You don't have no solutions of what works. Why are we going to get out of here? How are we getting out of Babylon? The great. You got a solution? 
Well, this one solution I know for sure that worked every single time. And I challenge anybody out there to prove me wrong. But it takes humility. In a broken country, I swear, before the most high. Ain't none of you prideful cats going to be able to deal with this. And you might burn in the lake of fire. If you don't hear what, it's, what, what we did. You call yourself an Israelite, who are you? Where were you at in this time? Let's read about it. This this, this is the ones that received salvation, delivered from their enemies and from the hand of all that hated them, right here. Go to Deuteronomy 26 chapter. We're going to go through it. Deuteronomy 26, and let's look at verse 6. And Egyptians evil entreated us. Hear that? The Egyptians evil entreated us. We was in captivity under them. And afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. Approximately about 80 years. For 350 years, we was ruling. We was mighty. Like it says in, in verse 5 at the end, it says, And sojourned there in Egypt with a few and became three, excuse me, and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. See, we ain't great now. We ain't mighty, and we ain't populous as we should be. They got abortion clinics everywhere. How many of us have been dropped off in the, the, the sodas, like they said, they're using the simp sales for everything. And the Egyptian evil entreated us. And afflicted us. You see that mighty in verse 5? Mighty mean we was ruling. Believe that. And the Egyptian evil entreated us. And afflicted us. And laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the most high of our fathers, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The most high heard our voice. The solutions. We cry unto the most high of our fathers, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We said, This is my name forever and a memorial to all generations. The power heard our voice. He heard us crying to him and looked on our affliction, looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. He looked on how we were being treated. And the Most High brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. How about that mighty hand of the angel of the Most High? Hamashiach Yahushai. That led us in a cloud as a chariot in the daytime. In a fiery chariot at nighttime to give us light and to guide us. And with an outstretched arm. And with great terribleness, you know, great terribleness. That's why he's called a destroyer. But see, people don't know him like that. Like I said, you don't know him, you better know who you talk about. Y'all calling on y'all so-called Jesus Christ. The one that's in this Bible, as I refer to as Hamashiach, you know what it said? And with great terribleness, and with signs and with wonders. And he have brought us into this place and have given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Most High, have given me. And thou hast set it before the Most High thy power and worship before the Most High thy power. And thou shalt rejoice every good thing which the Most High thy power have given unto thee and unto thy house. Thou and the Levite and the strangers that is among you. Blessings. Who are doing this? Did you hear what the Most High said? Verse 7 And when you, we cried unto the Most High our, of our fathers, the Most High heard our voice. We got to cry to the Most High. The Most High going to hear our voice and looked on our affliction and look on our affliction. 
in our labor, in our oppression. And if it's not you, you better cry anyway because the most side is going to be putting the books because our people are going through affliction, hard labor, working hard just to, just to make things, make ends meet and so forth. In our oppression, being oppressed. People that's sleeping on the ground still look like look at you like you're nothing. They're better than you. Being oppressed all kind of ways. That's why I say surely oppression make a wise man mad. Go to the book of Joshua. This is very important because, you know, I look at why, why be the truth and you don't have no solutions to anything. You're just going through formality. You might as well go back to theologian schools. Go somewhere that you're going to just be getting something that will benefit you in your world or your worlds. Look at... Uh, Joshua 24, and we're going to read verse 4. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. You know what the Most said? I gave unto Isaac. Most High bring forth the spirits to this earth. He said, I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir. He gave Esau the mountains called Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I said Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward, I brought you out. These are stories you need to be telling your children. These are stories you need to be knowing First yourself to be able to tell someone else. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And ye came unto the sea, that's the Red Sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Most High. And when they cried unto the Most High, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He put darkness between us and the Egyptians. And brought the sea upon them. Closed the sea up on them. As they were pursuing after us. Fair on his chariots. And covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. Them ten plagues he brought to the Egyptians. In the land of Egypt. That's why he say your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And nothing happened to us living in Goshen. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season, 40 years. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you. And I gave them into your hand. Most I killed them. That ye might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. What he said, I destroyed them before you. See? Then Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. Want him to curse us. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over Jordan and came into Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. The Amorites and the Parasites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. You hear what he said? I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you which drave them out from before you 
even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. So you had to fight at all. He sent hornets. He sent the army of hornets after him and drave them out from before thee, ran them out by bugs, <laughs> insects, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow, just the most high did. And I gave, and I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, and the vineyards and the olive yards which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore, he did all this for us. He said, now therefore, fear the most high. Fear the most high. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. Sincerity and in truth, keeping his law, statutes, commandments, doing what he said, his rules and regulations, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the most high. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the most high, like these religions are set up, evil to them to serve the most high. In keeping this law, statute, commandments, because they say you're not under the law, statute, commandments. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Most High, choose you this day whom you will serve. And you can choose this day whom you're going to serve. Everybody. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the most high to serve other gods. Hmm. For the most high, our power, he it is that brought us up out and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the ways wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. Hmm. And the Most High drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Most High, for he is our power. Right? You heard what we said. Now what we did, we can find out in Daniels 9-11. You heard what we said, but what did we do? You can talk a lot of talk, but you got to walk the walk. What do we do? Daniels 9-11. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned, which transgressed the Most High's laws against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as has been done unto Jerusalem, unto we the Israelites. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the most high, our power, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Understand this law. The truth is the laws of the most high. Psalms 119, 142. That righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. That's what it says, that we might turn from our iniquities, from our wickedness, from our sins, and understand thy truth. Therefore have the Most High watched upon the evil. We drew evil to us. Most High is not evil. But we're so evil and so wicked, we draw evil to us. Therefore have the Most High watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Most High, our power is righteous. You hear that? I say it all the time. The Most High our power is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. Therefore, 
what happened to us is because we sinned. We broke his laws. We transgressed his laws, statute of commandments. That's why I say, and now, o most high our power, that hath brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have gotten thee renowned. He got him a name. Like he can get a name that's going to be forever and ever and ever. We need to destroy all these kingdoms and set up righteousness on this earth. As at that this day, here he say, as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. We have sinned, Israel, and we have done wickedly in the eyes of the Most High. O Most High, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins, hear that? Because for who sins? Our sins. You, do you hear that word? Our Daniel's a righteous man, but do you hear him say our sins because of our sins? We have sinned for we obeyed not his voice. We have sinned. We have done wickedly. Including himself. I mean, this is what's marvelous in the eyes of the most high. That most people don't understand because you're so prideful. You're looking at everybody else sinning when you're a sinner too. Or you're doing something wrong and you're looking at them. And not including yourself. You want solutions? You're hearing solutions right here. But see, if you're not spiritual and have humility, then you cannot understand. It won't mean anything to you. And you're not going to get out of here going into the kingdom. You'll be thrown in the lake of fire. Because pride is hateful before man and the most high. As it is written. You can't do this without having humility and a broken contrite spirit. You got to see what works. And if you don't see this, I'm going to show you. And I've been showing you through the spirit of the most high what it is that's marvelous in the eyes of the most high. We're looking at solutions that will make the most high have pity on us. But you got to hear in the spirit of what the prophets done and the apostles, everybody, everybody done the same thing. When you find out what works, why not use it to your advantage? This is what our ancestors, Daniel, I mean, Daniel was, look, this is how, this is how righteous Daniel is. But you got to hear what he's saying, but you, this is how the most I told, what he told him. In Daniel's 12 and 13, the last verse of Daniel, it says, but go thy way. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Daniel didn't have to come back here for this. You didn't have to be here for this. He's just going to rest in his lot. But listen to what he's saying. Just pray. He's praying to the Most High. You got to hear what he's saying. Verse 16 of Daniel the ninth chapter. O Most High, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins, you got to hear that, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people, 12 tribes of Israel, I'll become a reproach, a disgrace to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our power, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications. Supplications mean what? He's crying to the Most High. And cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Most High's sake. O my power, incline thine ear and hear, open and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations. And the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, sis, but for thy great mercies. 
It ain't because you so righteous, he's saying, or we so righteous, he said, because of the Most High's great mercy. Got to hear what he's saying. Let's go back to Daniel's 9 and 3. Where this prayer started. And I set my face upon the Most High to seek my prayer and supplications. What's that? Mourning and crying and weeping. With fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So he's at a lower state before the Most High. Ain't no pride in this at all. This humility and broken country spirit. Supplications. You see? And I set my face upon the Most High. Verse 4. And I prayed unto the Most High of my power and made my confession. Made my confession to the Most High. And said, O Most High, the great and dreadful power, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to keep that Keep and, and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned. Hear what he said? First thing he said, we have sinned. Are you saying that? We have sinned. We, including him, and he's righteous. I don't care not about your righteousness. You're like a filthy rag to him, thinking you are righteous. We have sinned, he said. And have committed iniquity. Verse 5. And have done wickedly. Who is he talking about? We have sinned. You hear that? Include himself. Even though he's righteous. They don't have to come back here to deal with these end days. That's how righteous he is. But this is what works. This is the solution. We have sinned. And have committed iniquity. And have done wickedly. And have rebelled. Even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. That's not like the church today. They ain't going over no laws of the most high and priests through the precepts of topics and so forth. Because the most high ain't called them to do that. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings. Neither have we. I want you to hear this. When Daniel was right, I mean, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. But he's still including himself with who? The wicked. And not including himself as one of the righteous. You got to hear this. But if you ain't spiritual, you ain't going to understand it. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in the name of our kings to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Verse 8, O Most High, to us belong a confusion of face, to our kings to our, and to our princes and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. That we means a lot. Our means a lot when you include yourself. The most, to the Most High, our power be long suffering mercies and forgivenesses. Though we including himself, including Daniel, have rebelled against him. Neither have we, including himself, obeyed the voice of the Most High, our power, to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. There it is. But about you don't understand? If you don't understand something, check with me so we can look at it. Look at verse 20, Daniel 9 and 20. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, that's why he's saying we and our, Israel, and presenting my supplications, cries before the most high my power for the holy mountain of my power. Yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision of at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening obligation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, like his cries, his weeping to the Most High, 
the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, but thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. See? Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to the, to make an end of sins. The still of the Mashiach of Shai coming to this earth and dying for the sins of the twelve tribes of Israel and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy of Mashiach Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to, rest, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah. There he is right there. The prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. A score is 20, so that's 62 weeks. The streets shall be built again in the wall, even, the, even in troublous times. That's why he said, it's the, the, the kingdom of heaven, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, suffered violence and the violent taken by force. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. You're going to die. You know, uh, three score is 60, 62 weeks. Shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. I mean, He's going to die, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war, desolation are determined. That's when we fell in 70 AD. So, I'm just trying to show you how and what works. And let me just make it clear. One more of my favorite prophets, Ezra. Because I'm making a point. You heard what Daniel kept saying. We have sinned. We, we, we. Our sins, including himself. Ezra, same way. Crying to the Most High. And talking of concerning what it is that works. Solutions. Look at uh, 2 Ezra 7 and 48. Let's start at verse 46. 2 Ezra 7 and 46. I answered then and said, This is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else... When it was given him to have restrained him from sinning. He said it had been better not to give Adam the earth, but after you gave it to him, to restrain him from sinning. For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness, catch a lot of hell, and after death to look for punishment? You in hell, and then when you die, you're going to look for punishment? He's saying. Because some don't believe after death you, get, you can go to hell, you can, get, you can be punished. He said, after death, look for punishment. And thou, Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou, you that sinned, thou art not fallen alone. You ain't fell alone because the most I said, the day that they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you ain't going to live a day. And he cut our years down. I mean, they lived almost, you know, 100 years. 979 years, but to think it's the most that anyone ever lived. And then he cut it down to 120, then he cut it down to 70. You think above that, you, you're blessed. He said, O thou, Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. And we all come from Adam. You come from Shem, Ham, or Japheth, Noah's sons, after the flood. But what profit is it unto us, listen at this, and I'm here because of Daniel saying us. I want you to give you an example of Ezra saying the same thing. For what profit is it to unto us if there be promised us, that's the children of Israel, in a mortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? 
including himself. You gotta hear this. Because most, most people read it and just go right over their head. You gotta hear what he's saying, what works. Solutions. And that there is promised us, including himself, an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves, including himself, being most wicked, have made are made vain. This is what works. This is our solutions. As he crying to the most high, and you crying to the most high, I'm crying to the most high as a nation. This is what works. Most are gonna hear this. And that there are laid up for us, including himself, including Ezra, dwellings of hell and safety, whereas we, including himself, have sinned wickedly, have, have uh, lived wickedly, Salakia. Including himself, we have lived wickedly. <clears throat> and that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life, whereas we, including himself, including Ezra, have walked in the most wicked ways of all and that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endure forever wherein is security and medicine since we shall not enter into it you that he not putting himself into the kingdom he just said he won't even enter into it the kingdom you got brothers that's already in the kingdom but they can't tell me the number that they are the 144,000 what tribe they going in that gate? What gate they going into? And what number the hundred or the twelve thousand are they? Or what part of their one third are they? Are they not even part of the you know one hundred forty four thousand? But you hear what he's saying? He not inclusive. That's why I say the righteous guests are gonna be saved. Most I said, dare not make thyself one of the number. And we gotta grow in the spirit as time goes on. You can't stay in the same spot, hear this, and then still remain in ignorance. And you're hearing what works. So he said, since we shall not enter into it, that's the kingdom. <coughs> and we have walked in unpleasant places. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. But while we lived and committed iniquity, including himself, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Okay? Now he said all that. Let's see what the Most High told him. Because the Most High heard. He heard everything. He even, he even hear your thoughts. He hear our thoughts. Including my minds. So it says in 2nd Ezra 8, 48. This is very important. And this also... Thou art marvelous before the Most High. You want to be marvelous before the Most High? Listen to what it says. In that thou hast humbled thyself. That's why I tell you, we got to cry to the Most High. The only way you're going to do this is you're hearing Daniel and Ezra so far crying to the Most High with supplication. He humbled himself. I mean, ain't no pride in what you just heard from Daniel or Ezra. As it becometh thee, and has not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. See? He didn't find himself to be much glorified among the righteous. That's why he kept saying we and our sins. We have sinned. For many great miseries. Hear this, hear this clearly. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time, when the last days, brothers, shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. Got to get that pride up or that misery going to come upon you. But understand now for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. That hit home with me. I'm like, wow, who really is like this? Tell him to seek out the glory for such as be like this. Who going to hear this and really change? To be marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. You hear what it said? Verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time, and we in the last days, brothers, shall dwell in the world. Why? 
because they have walked in great pride. Lifting yourself up to be somebody. Amashak Abshai told us, he that exalt himself shall be abased. He that humble himself shall be exalted. Verse 51, but understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Seek out those that's going to be like Ezra, like Daniel was. Moses prayed the same, same way. For unto thou, uh, for unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. You know, the tree of life is planted. The swords, the flame of swords is away from the tree of life. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. My second side said, I go to prepare a place for you. It's prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is built and rest is allowed. Yeah, perfect goodness and wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weak, weakness and the moth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past, and in the end is showed the treasure of immortality, living forever and ever. All praise and glory to the Most High. His word is true. Hallelujah. So that's, that's a lot of meat right there. But it's spiritual. And it takes humility and a broken country spirit, which the Most High requires, to see this. Understand or overstand this. Go to the book of Judges. And you're going to see this solution works. You know, I know half the people figure they got it once they've seen the first lesson, but. It's very important that we see this. The book is of Judges. The, uh. Third chapter. Judges three. And five. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and Parasites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. Among these so-called African nations. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to, be, to their sons, and served their gods. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 7. So you see what the law what the Most High told us. We already know from Daniel's 9-11 what we did. But look what the Most High told us in the law. Deuteronomy 7. And we started at verse 1. So it named these nations you can hear, hear clearly what the Most High told us. When the Most High thy power shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Sound familiar? Some of the nations, same nations that he